Morning, I caught myself between the Glasgow change to get to air. Went down and played in the firehouse. We played some music, I drank a little bit of Guinness. We had a nice time, it was fun. And then after that, we drove back to Mark Bailey's house. He's a guitar man. Yeah, he's a guitar man. Makes nice guitars. And if you ask him kindly and politely, he'll say, Come down to my place and we'll make a guitar. Any kind of guitar that you like, I've seen some sort of all about it stuff, I've seen some sort of electrified guitars, I've seen some sort of ukuleles, I've seen all kinds of guitars, I've been out there today, I was out there today, he did something cool with my guitar, he sort of took the thing out, put it back in, I felt like a real professional guitar player when he did it, it was really cool and fun, I liked it, but I can't quite do it myself, so you gotta get yourself a guitar maker man who knows exactly what he's doing, Mark Billy. Mark Bailey, he knows what he's doing, making guitars, he made this guitar, I like this guitar, it plays nice, so if you want to make a guitar, or need to get a guitar, or something you need fixing, just go see the man, Mark Bailey, uh, yeah. We're on. Yeah. Yay! Hey! hey, hey. <laughs> we made it! <laughs> Woohoo! Look, 17 seconds to go. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your patience, guys, for sticking with us through our incredibly ropey start there. <clears throat> As usual, user error. One of the settings was flicked the wrong way. So anyway, today we have something new and exciting to show you as you've probably read by the title. This is um, the new um, fret slotting jig made by uh, our Darren King from Bag Press. So um, yeah, I guess gonna have to be straight up on this one today. We are trying to sell you something. <laughs> I'm trying to flog you something. Uh, the, the fretting jig for um, making the fret slots on fretboards. So, um, Thank them all for being patient. I've already done that, Carol. Were well, you not listening? Thanks again for being patient. Um, so it basically consists of two parts. You've got the main base here, and then you've got um, a pattern. Now this pattern has actually got six patterns on it. Um, six rows, and as you can see, if I give you a close-up, can you read that? Beautiful. So this is the one that I think most people would want. It's got the, um, all the scale lengths that we use on the course and a few extra ones as well. Six different scale lengths, probably more than most people will ever need on there. Um, but Darren's also put together some other ones with different scale lengths on. Um, very well thought out actually, the way he's arranged them. Um, so this one is, uh, well, let's go through them in order. So number two. So this is the one that I think um, will probably be included with the jig or the one that I would certainly recommend most people buy. This is the standard one. And then we've got number two, which has scale lengths 
Um, 22, 24, that's the, the old Gibson 60s scale length there, 24.56. And then there's the more modern Gibson, 24 and 3 quarters. You've got your 25 and your 25 and a half inch. So that one's um, mainly electric guitars, electric guitar templates. And he's done number three is for acoustic guitars. And the scale lengths on that one are um, 640. So your McAfee, um looks like what he's done is arranged them in size order. So he's put the shortest one first and then um, a Martin scale length. That's the standard acoustic scale length that we use. And then the 25 and a half. So that's also a popular acoustic scale length, although it is the, the standard um, electric scale length as well for a lot of guitars, Fender style guitars anyway. And he's got um, Loudon scale, classical scale, and another McAfee. So the Grand Bouche and the Petit Bouche McAfee. <clears throat> so pretty much every acoustic scale length you'd ever need on that one. So um, number four is um, for bass guitars. So people are always asking me about bass guitars. Um, and on this one, we've got uh, a short scale bass would be 30 or 32 or even 33 and a quarter. Standard scale would be 34. And then for a five string bass, I recommend 35. And for a six string bass, 36 inch scale. So a whole um, board full of bass scale lengths. And then he's even done um, one for baritones. So this is uh, the baritone one. And this has got um, basically 26 and a half to 30 inches in half inch increments. Um, barring that one, 29.625. So those are all the most popular baritone scale lengths. And, you know, I've got to say kudos to, um, to Darren for, for just for working all this out and putting it all together. Um, hell of a lot of work. Look at all these holes. It's all had to be um, designed on, on his CNC machine. So these patterns are all CNC'd and um, what is used for the material is a marine ply. So it's really good quality, you know, as good as it gets plywood. The difference is using, and um, if you've ever used cheap plywood before, you probably have, you probably notice when you cut into it, you can cut into and there's all voids inside where the wood isn't fitted together perfectly. Marine ply is guaranteed to be no voids. Um, so you, your patterns are perfect. When you cut into them, you don't end up with gaps. And uh, it's really good quality and it makes, it makes them a bit more expensive than they could be. But um, it's certainly worth it for the quality. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about these, the actual patterns in a minute. Let's have a look at the jig. So the jig again is all made from marine ply. It's all good quality stuff. But um, this makes it, um, what we can do is we, we can make them cheaper than um, most other patterns of this style that you'll have seen before because they're CNC'd from plywood rather than anything else. Um, yeah, I think they are gonna be competitively priced we haven't um we haven't finalized yet that yet and they're not actually on the website yet but by the weekend carol's promised me that they'll be on the website by the weekend so you'll actually be able to go and buy them yeah we'll have a go this afternoon at getting them up so um yeah so check the website the guitarmaking.co.uk um since i've brought it up also what you'll find on there if you're new to the channel guitar making channel is all about making it as easy as possible for you to build your first or best yet guitar. So we've got a lot of beginners and um, professionals alike, actually. People who work in guitar shops and all sorts of guys. People who've gone on to become professional makers in their own right and who are now selling their guitars. Um, but what I've basically done is I've put together um, humongous online guitar making academy, which contains courses like design and build your own electric and acoustic guitar 
and um, so what I've done is I basically filmed the process step by step and it literally starts with a blank piece of paper and you can draw virtually any guitar you like um, it could even be a ukulele or a, or a bass guitar pretty much anything um, and that's acoustic or electric and I show you how to design them and then to go on to build it so it's a step-by-step -step process it's, but the methods are the same whatever you're building so um, on the courses I'm laying out a basic guitar something like this but it doesn't have to be this it could be a carved top or put a trim on it or anything you like we're building up to um, basically November is dedicated to the finishing course so the guitar that you saw spinning at the start that was sprayed with a high gloss finish um, so what we're doing in November is we're filming how to basically how to do that how to finish a guitar and I'm going to be including all the different colors all these colors that you basically all the different normal guitar colors that you can get and then it'll be up to you what you do with it so I'll be showing you oil finishes matte finishes and gloss finishes um, and that's all coming up in well we're, we're going to be um, constructing it during November filming it um, and editing in November so we'll get it out as soon as we possibly can um, also imminent is the masterclass on bridges which I've been working on in the background um, along with quite a few other things as well so um, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up before Christmas um, so if if any of this is what floats your boat guitarmaking.co.uk it wasn't just cobbled together for the lockdown by the way I've been working on this for over five years and um, what I think we've we've got is the most comprehensive guide to building a guitar that you could possibly get. So having said all that, just want to thank you all for joining us. And I'm going to actually today show you how to slot a fretboard using this fret slotting jig. And Darren has also given me permission to crash test it. <laughs> so I might actually, um, well, I don't want to test anything to destruction, but um, let's see what happens. So um, Carol's over there. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, then um, make sure to type in the chat. And Carol's over there. She's already got a hand up. So um, if you've got any questions, Carol will be shouting them out on your behalf because I can't see the screen. So um, thanks to Carol for dealing with the chat over there. And thanks to everybody who's participating. Let's have a few questions and then I'm going to um, crash on with it. There aren't any questions yet. I've just put my hand up because I wanted to say you to say to people that because bag press is in the chat they can ask questions that Darren can answer that technical questions but I can also ask questions that you can answer as well so they've got they've got two experts today. Brilliant so hopefully you heard that um, our Darren from from bag press he's in the house so if you've got any questions type them in the comments and uh, Darren will get to them as well if I don't. Um, can I tell you that we've got a new, a new person in the house today. Um, we've got Andrew K Kalela. I don't remember him joining the chat before. He said he started making guitars this year and he's finding it very interesting. He loves the jig. It looks like great quality. Thank you. Yes, well, I agree. It is great quality. Um, it's beautiful. Um, there are just a couple of things I'd like to say about it, um, which I think are important. So um, the first thing, I suppose, is um, when we're making a fretboard, um, I did actually make a video called um, Making a Fretboard, How We Do It, where I show you we use machines for this. I use a fret slotting machine, which um, obviously it's got a power saw for the saw, so it makes everything a bit easier. Um, takes all the sweat out of it. Um, here we're going to be using a hand saw and it's going to take a bit longer. Um, but basically the method is the same. The only difference really is that with this is that we're applying the power by hand. It should be every bit as accurate and just as good. So this, this jig um, comes with the saw. And the saw has um, a bearing edge on it, bearing sides. 
So, um, I mean, if you lose the saw or something, then don't worry about it. I'll just contact Darren and he'll, I'm sure he'll be able to send you some more of that stuff. Um, but it, it basically fits into the jig like this. And so I think the first thing we've got to do is, uh, is just set that so it doesn't wobble. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to setting the jig up in a minute. Um, first of all, I want to talk about these patterns and how we use them. So I did, as I was saying, I did make a video how we do it, where we use machines, but the basic method is the same. We use this double-sided tape. Um, don't use just any old double-sided tape. Don't use um, carpet tape, for instance. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's good and bad double-sided tape, and basically this is, this is the good stuff. If you use the bad stuff, it will take you longer to clean it all off afterwards than it does to do the actual job. And it might destroy the pattern and it might destroy your fretboard as well. This stuff is made, it's made to be removable. So it's quite tough tape, it's like a vinyl tape. It peels off in one piece rather than having to, you know, peel off lots of little bits. So don't use ordinary carpet tape. What you're looking for is NEC approved tape or um, exhibition tape. So this is approved for floors, NEC approved. Um, if you have trouble finding it, we actually supply this on our website, guitarmaking.co.uk. So head over to there and get um, the best quality double-sided tape you can get. Um, because it's removable. Um, yeah, let's not talk about the masking tape and super glue trick. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so the first thing I want to say then, right, is um, not all fretboards are created the same. Um, some fretboards are tapered. In fact, most fretboards that we buy in already come with a taper. So here's, here's one. It actually looks straight, doesn't it? But if you measure it, If you measure it, it's actually um, 70 mil this end and 60 mil this end. So it's not square. So we can't just sit it in the jig resting against the edge. Um, some fretboards come and they are square. So this one is the same, it's the same thickness at both ends. So this one will just sit in the jig. It's a little bit wide for the jig, so I just need to plane a bit off. But I've got one here somewhere. So <clears throat> a lot of my fretboards are square actually, but not all of them. Um, and you can't rely on, if you're ordering a fretboard from somebody, um, you can't rely on it coming square. So you can't just sit your fretboard in the jig like this. Um, I'm going to show you how to deal with your fretboard if it's tapered. Most fretboards, in fact, are come in and they're tapered. So they're actually a little bit thinner at one end, a little bit fatter at the other end. If we sit that in straight, then we're going to have frets that are not square to the board, or they're square to one edge of the board, and then you might just find that you haven't got enough board to get the width that you're wanting um, to get a, a full size fretboard out of it. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Here's a, here's a fancy fretboard, you see, bird's eye maple. Generally speaking, the more fancy your fretboard, the less wood you get. <laughs> so this one's already cut pretty much to almost to size. It's only a little bit oversized. So if we just put that in the jig, and start cutting um, square like that, then the chances are, well, we're definitely gonna have um, not enough meat to cut our fretboard out square. Hopefully this is making some kind of sense to you. As opposed to this kind of fretboard, which is square, which we can just sit in like that, you see. And then we cut the taper afterwards. Unfortunately, beggars can't be choosers, and we have to deal with what we're given. 
and most of our fretboards, like I say, are coming already tapered. So I'm going to show you how we deal with that. And um, most of you probably already guessed, it's quite simple. Um, as with most guitar making, as with all guitar making actually, it all starts from a centre line. Um, because, as I say, you very rarely get a square board to work with. Um, and nothing on a guitar is straight and square anyway. Everything's like tapered or curved. Um, so for those reasons, we always start with a centre line. So what I'm going to suggest you do, if you buy the pattern from us, and you need to work with a tapered fretboard, what I recommend you do is draw a centre line on the fretboard and a centre line on your pattern as well. Okay? So that's the first thing I want to say, is um, I'd highly recommend that you put a centre line on this. Um, just on the front. you notice the back, Darren's actually countersunk the, uh, the holes. That's so that it sits easier into the, um, into the pin when you're putting it together. So it's all very well thought out and put together. Um, let's choose a scale length. So I don't know, if, can you see this pin? Maybe if I go in close. Well, I'm going to draw a centre line on the pattern and on the um, and on the fretboard before I get distracted. I had a pencil all lined up. Can't see it, can you? Lost me pencil already. It needs to be a sharp white, pe a sharp pencil. I had it all lined up. What did he say about the centre line? Yeah, read it out for us. So, um, questions, there's a few questions in the chat which we, we can come back to, but just uh, to cover the, the centre line, um, Roel Shooting asked about that, and, the, and Bag Press, our Darren says, the template is machined from the underside and the registration on the laser cutter isn't ideal, so marking a perfect centre line isn't as simple as it might sound. Yeah, so, um, Basically, what Darren's saying is that everything's machined from the other side, and so to put a centre line on the front, you'd have to turn it over, effectively doubling the amount of time it takes to to um, to, to make the pattern. So, what, or adding time anyway, and so the patterns would have to be more expensive. So, um, and also because of the way it's done, it couldn't necessarily guarantee the centre line's going to be in exactly in the middle. So what I'm going to suggest is that we just draw our own centre lines on with a pencil. Easy peasy. And you've saved yourself half the money then. So, um, let me just show you how we do a centre line. You guys already know. Let's do it here. I'm going to pick two places. I'm going to use a nice round number. It could be any number. Let's use 100. And what I'm going to do is look at the edges and I'm going to try and get it right in the middle without using any maths at all. I can start that and go one, two, three, five, seven. So it's the same one, two, three, five, seven. So it's the same both sides and you can get that really accurate. You'd be surprised how accurate you can get that. Um, basically down to the thickness of one of these lines make a mark. So we do the same at both ends. Um, this is my method of marking centres which will work on anything. So we're going to use this exactly the same method to mark on the fretboard. So now if we put our pencil on the mark and move the ruler up to it, do the same at the other end. I'm actually going to move the ruler to the other side so you can see a bit better. Put my pencil on the mark. Pencil on the mark. Move my ruler up to it. And then I'll do the same at the other end. Pencil on the mark, move it up. 
I've got to double check that a few times obviously to make sure but then I can draw that on and I know that that centre line's pretty darn accurate. I'll do the same on the fretboard. And then we can line them up. This is a piece of purple heart by the way, if you're wondering. Um, uh, the Lutheria de Pobla, the, the, the poor man's Luthier is in the house. They're saying that's a, that's a Brazilian wood, isn't it? It is, yes. So we'll draw the centre line on. Question, yeah. There's a question about the centre line. Go um, on. TV 101 says you, you don't need a centre line all the way along the pattern, just at the top and the bottom where the end of the fret will, will be. What would you say to that? Well, yeah, that's probably true. But as you're there, why not just draw it all the way along? I would. So, obviously, you can see here, maybe you can see if I change the camera. Basically, how it works is there's a hole drilled for every fret slot, including the nut, which would be your zero fret or your nut. Okay? So, this would be, uh, if we were going for a 25 inch scale length, then we need to move this pin to the second hole in here. So maybe that's what I'll do in a minute. Um, but then as you can see, there's a different hole drilled for every fret. So zero, one, two, three. The pin will line up with the hole and then it allows the fret slot to cut really accurately each fret. Um, zero, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 frets. <clears throat> so what you have to do is make sure, well, we're going to stick this on here with double-sided tape. And we need to make sure that it goes past this hole here. This would be your nut line and we would, we would be cutting that off later or cutting a nut slot instead. So you don't want to try and line it up like that. You need to line it up so it's past the hole and then when you, when you make the slot, you can cut that off later and make your fretboard. I'll show you what I mean. Here's some that we've already pre-made. Um, so that's, that's the zero fret there. And that's the first fret where my thumb is, like this. Um, do you want me to tell you something that that question said? So what we do is we, add, we leave this overhanging and then, and then cut it off later. Go on then. Uh, Bagpuss says... Or we make uh, a nut Darren slot. Says, Darren says the nut slot is adjusted plus 0.3 of a mil to allow for half the saw thickness. The Macaferry zero fret position isn't adjusted. Okay. Sorry, I don't know if that was relevant to what you were saying. Yes, because that's the cut-off point. So, yeah, Darren's literally thought of everything to make sure that's in the right place. Twelve stars. There is, there is, um, there is one thing then that I, I want to say. I'll do it now. We stick these on with double-sided tape, okay? And I'll show you the two methods. Right, if you've got. Your tapered one, let's do the tapered one first. So we've got the pencil line on this side, the centre line. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. yeah. And we've got our centre line on, on the pattern. So we, we need to stick our fretboard on in the right place. Um, so what I usually do is use five pieces, five squares of double-sided tape like this. Now, 
notice I'm cutting off the edge and I'm, I'm not putting the tape on the pattern either I'm putting the tape on the fretboard and I'm um, I'm cutting off the edge so I'm not actually damaging anything I think um, well I normally put four or five bits on let's put five bits on you could um, you could just put one great big long bit on but I find this uses less pieces um, but of course because it is tapered we can't allow this fretboard to move at all whilst it's being cut if it comes loose halfway through the chances of getting it lined up back in the same place again you know, is virtually nothing um, so what I'd say if it does come loose you could start putting a clamp on maybe so I'm going to peel this tape off and show you what we do sticking it down what I do is I use my um, my fingers as legs so we drop one end down and then I can line this up with the centre line here making sure that it goes past the, the nut or the first zero fret it's got to go past there so this bit will be scrap later we'll be cut that off so what I'm doing is I'm supporting it um, at this end here in the same way with some legs my feet as my fingers as legs so I can drop this end down and it won't stick problem with double-sided tape is as soon as it sticks it sticks and you can't reposition so um, if you stick it down in the wrong place you've just got to start again take it all off and start again so you've got to make sure it goes down in the right place first time so if you hold it with as if you've got fingers for legs you can drop one end down and then you can line this end up with the centre line and then when this is lined up you can you can lock it there with your fingers and drop the other end down and then you know both ends are lined up yeah I would draw the centre line all the way along because the fretboards are all different lengths as well and you might find it's just not quite long enough for your fretboard or whatever so um, what I normally do then is give it a squeeze with some kind of clamp you don't want to put masses of pressure on because we do need to remove this afterwards but you want to give it a bit of a squeeze because if this comes off halfway through it's a disaster so easy peasy so th that's how you set up a tapered fretboard um, let me set up a, a straight fretboard and you'll see it's much easier um, I'll use this one instead so if, you've, if you're lucky enough to get a fretboard that's the same thickness at both ends then it's, it's much easier all you've got to do pop it in your jig and which scale length should we go for let's pick one that I might use Right, here's a uh, 24 and 3 quarter scale length, scale length. So let's say we're using that. Um, with a, with a, if you're lucky enough to get a straight fretboard, you can basically just stick it in like that. Maybe put it in the middle somewhere, just to line it up. And then you only need a little bit, you don't need so much tape because. Um, because what you can do is stick it in maybe even just two or three pieces let's put three pieces on it's much much less likely to move because it's got the support of the jig behind it I'll show you what I mean
So um, if you're lucky enough to get a straight piece, then you can just pop it in, line it up with the jig like that. Just straight into the jig, pull it back there. I should have made sure it was uh, made sure it was just past the nut, and then stick it on like that. So it doesn't need to be stuck um, super hard. And um, another thing you could do, just to be on the safe side, you could have a clamp on it and just move the clamp every time. So I don't want to cut um, two fretboards, so I'm just going to do one. So I'm going to put that to one side. So if you've got a, if you're lucky enough to get a straight fretboard, it just just pop it straight in the jig, line it all up, stick it on, and then away you go. If you've got a tapered fretboard, it needs to be stuck a lot more firmly, and uh, make sure the center lines are aligned. So let's just go ahead and set this jig up then. Um, it's come with these lovely little countertunk holes here, so uh, so I'm going to actually screw it down to the bench if I can find my screwdriver. It, it is a beautiful thing, isn't it? People are commenting on how. Yeah, it's a work of art. Um, I'm looking for some screws. I got them out earlier. Box of screws. Oh, I was so well prepared earlier, and then um, everything went wrong. The joys of live streaming. So this is optional, obviously. But Darren's been kind enough to provide these mounting holes, so we might as well use them. Um, if you don't want it mounted permanently on your bench, then I would maybe recommend um, screw it to a bigger board that you can then clamp to the bench or don't even bother. Just clamp it as you need it. So not everybody might want to clamp it to their bench. Okay, so in this case, we're going for the Martin scale length and it fits perfectly into there like that. Okay, um, before we move on then, there's one more caveat, is that if you're making a lot of guitars, if you're making a lot of guitars, then you might actually want to um, you might want to just put a light coat of sealer on these because the double-sided tape, especially if you're using tapered fretboards and you have to put a lot of pressure on, they stick really strong. What you don't want is to damage the wood of the pattern when you pull the tape off. So it's okay if you've got normal, uh, if you've got a square fretboard, you don't need much clamping pressure. These come off nice and easy. Um, but what I'm worried about is um, if you're making a lot of guitars, making the patterns last a bit longer, what I'd recommend is just just one, like a dust coat of sealer. And so that's what I've done with mine, is that I just sprayed a dust coat of sealer. Do not wipe on sealer or wipe on any kind of um, product because if you wipe it on, then it's guaranteed to clog up all the holes. And these holes are specifically engineered to fit perfect interference fit on the pin and so if you get anything inside those holes your jig's not going to work um, very well so bear that in mind but um, just to show you what I did I did mine this morning actually um, I just put it on the back of uh, the chair like this can you see that I'll turn the chair around I put it on the back of my chair and I just gave it a dust coat. Um, so if, 
if you really want to make it last forever, if you're only making, you know, a few guitars, then you probably don't need to go to this extent. But if you want your jig to last forever, then you might want to just put a, a dust coat of um, sand and sealer or any kind of lacquer, just um, not too thick. You don't want any runs or anything like that. So it's literally just to seal the front and you certainly don't want to get any in the holes. So I'll just show you what I mean. If uh, we can do this, just move that out of the way. Oh, I can't. So just a dust coat. Don't worry about the smell, Carol. It goes away in a minute. That's all I'm talking about. Just a dust coat. So it's not a wet coat. You don't want it um, sitting on there wet. It's literally just a dust coat. And what it does is it protects that surface and it will make, mean that the, um, the double-sided tape will come off a lot easier. So if you want to really future-proof your patterns, then that's what I'd recommend. Um, I'd recommend you draw a center line on it um, and then shoot a coat of sealer. Um, but you certainly don't have to. That would be just my recommendation. So let's have a go at setting up this jig then now. Zoom in a bit. What we've got to do is adjust it so that the um, the saw doesn't rattle in that slot. So if we if we just slap those off. Um, actually, what I'd suggest is that you leave. Let's try. You just leave one side straight and move the other side up to it. We don't want it to be clamping the saw, obviously. The saw needs to slide, but it doesn't want to wobble. So I'll just nip that up there. Oh, look at that. Oops. So just so that you can see, I'll show you the close-up of the Allen key there. Actually, I can see that pretty well from there. Um, That's really crisp. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I, I actually think this is the best yeah. value um, fret slot and jig you can buy as we speak. So now look at that. That's actually pretty solid. There's, there's very, very little movement there. Maybe just a little. That's what you want. So obviously it doesn't want to be clamping the saw, but it wants to be holding it firmly. So it doesn't, doesn't rattle. There, look at that. Beautiful. So, um, why is that important that it doesn't rattle? Because you don't want it to widen out the slot. You want it to cut just a perfect straight slot. Um, one other thing I want to mention as well, if we just, I'll show you on this piece of wood here. Um, right, imagine any old piece of wood, right? If you just cut, if I, if I was to push like that, then it can knock bits of wood off the end. So what we do, what I recommend to start with is that you do a pull stroke like this, just to break this edge and you'll get a nice clean, um, you'll get a nice clean um, cut there instead of, uh, instead of ripping out bits on the edge. So yeah, pull it towards you a few times first on that corner. Wow, it's sharp. Yeah, um, always good to have a nice sharp fret saw. We're just going to keep sawing until it won't cut anymore. And what's happened is the saw rests down on the stop to actually set the depth of the slot. So if you wanted to cut a shallower slot, you could, I wonder if you could use those to set the depth. Let's have a look. Yeah. 
So there, Darren's cleverly built in a way to set the depth of the fret slot by using um, by using these stops as adjustments. Can I just read you out something that you put on? The actual depth of the fret slot you're looking for, by the way, the final depth of the slot should be about 10 to 20 percent deeper than the actual tang of the fret. Just slightly deeper than the tang of the fret. Go on, we've got a comment. Well, it's just that, so back when you were adjusting it earlier, bag press says leave the right hand guide tight against the rebate and adjust the left hand side. The right hand one just moved for height adjustment. Brilliant. Hopefully you got that. So um, yeah, so the right hand one's for height adjustment. Is that right? No, the left hand one's for height adjustment and you leave the right hand one where it is. The, yeah. I did wonder about that actually. Le I did. Uh, I did wonder whether you meant to leave one Just where it is. I got it. I got it the wrong way around. <laughs> okay, um, so there you go. It's got a depth stop built in. Fantastic. Can I just before you move on? I've got loads of questions. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, um, we have Anna. Yep. Is asking um, how did you calibrate the depth? How did we calibrate the depth? Oh, that's what I was just talking about. These here are adjustable up and down. So what Darren's saying, um, the designer of the jig, he's online, by the way, if you've got any questions, um, is we adjust, we leave this one where it is, this one stays where it is, and then we adjust this one. So if we want to adjust the depth, we can move this up and down. Obviously you have to do both of them. Let's go a little bit deeper. Move that down. And then it'll go a bit deeper, you see? Did you get that? Did everybody get that? Um, so how you arrive at the final depth, it's actually, it's probably a little bit of trial and error, but what you're looking for is, um, I've made that too tight now. It needs to be just slightly deeper than the tang of the fret. And again, when you're doing these fret slots, really, um, you might have to go over them again later when you're actually putting the frets in. When you're building a guitar by hand, we would always double check everything. So before you actually put the frets in, I would check the depth of the fret slot just to make sure um, you know, when you're doing things by hand, you might necessarily not get everything exactly perfect first time. So there's all checks and balances along the way. If you're using my methods of building a guitar, just before you put the frets in, there is, there's a job where we check the depth slots. Check the depth of the slots is one of the jobs. So you can, that's, that's now drilling a little bit deeper. So, as I was saying, the worst possible thing that can happen here is that this comes loose while we're working. So, yeah, if you really wanted to be on the safe side, you could always put a clamp on. Can I read you something out then? Go on then. The back press is saying, if you know the slot goes to the three mil at the bottom of the board, Put a bit of 3mm MDF on the jig and set the guides so that the saw rests on the MDF. And then every slot will stop at this depth. Cool. Is right? Yeah. So I'll just show you what Darren said. Is you can get a piece of wood that's an eighth of an inch thick. Um, This is an eighth of an inch thick, so if we just take a bit of that. We could put that in there and then set that so that the saw goes to the, to the depth of that. Um, it's got to be on the pattern, hasn't it? Obviously, it needs to be on the pattern to be the same depth. Um, or you could set it to whatever depth you want using a, something like this. Um, let the soil go down until it drops onto it. 
Um, but as, you, as I was saying earlier, I think what I would do is consider this as um, basically marking the frets. So it's cutting the fret slots, but I would always check the depth of the fret slots before I actually put the frets in. And, um, you know, you've got your fret slot saw, so you can just run it through again a bit more if you need to. That's what I would suggest. So that's quite good fun, this. I might do a few more. So does anybody want to buy a Purple Heart fretboard? 25 inch scale. Was it? Oh no. No, this is an acoustic fretboard. Um, oh, there's one thing. Make sure you don't pull the saw too far back because it comes out of the jig. It's something to get used to. But with any new jig, there's always things you need to get used to. But there's four cut already. And I've been doing loads of talking. So let's just do a few at full speed and see what happens. Um, I've got a tendency to put this clamp on. It's just um, for a bit of peace of mind. Maybe use two hands on the saw. Adds a bit of time using the clamp. Let's try it without. So you can use the clamp if you need to. But I think for anybody's first fret slotter, it would be a corker. Oh, what I wouldn't have given for something like this when I first started. Yeah, I made mine. I made mine all by hand. My um, my patterns, all by hand with a vernier gauge. This was before CNCs were even available to mere mortals. Right, backwards is saying the left hand guides are the ones that you adjust to stop the saw wobbling. Right, left hand to adjust, stop the saw wobbling. wobbling. Yeah. And, and we should maybe write out some instructions. We'll write out some instructions, so if you buy one, just to make it all a bit more clearer. But you can see even an idiot can use it. Um, Andrew Palela suggests putting a stop on the end of the saw to stop it pulling out if you... Good idea. Look, you don't even have to take the saw out if, you want to, if you're in a hurry. I'm going to put the clamp on though. What I'm always worried about is it coming loose, you see, because then it's nigh on impossible to get it lined up again. Um, like Chris says, obviously you can clamp it if you like, that's why the fences are low on either side of the guide bushes. Yeah, brilliant. So it's built in. These fences are low deliberately so that you can put a clamp on. Um, well done. Well done, I say. So we'll be happy to supply these on our um, on our website. Um, so I, I just yeah, we'll get them on as soon as we can by the weekend. No, well, hopefully by the end of the day these yeah. will be on, and um, you'll be able to buy one. Well, Rick from the tower said, uh, "I don't suppose the templates should be available separately, but I know the backpress is saying they will, so we're gonna." We're yes, gonna... they'll be available separately. Um, obviously, we understand you're not gonna. Not everybody's going to want to buy all six, is there six patterns? Um, and some of them have got duplicates on as well. So um, I would say you probably just need to buy one um, unless you're making something special. Uh, Darren's really cleverly worked out on the, on the standard one. It's got all the standard scale lengths that I, I need. Um, unless I'm making a bass or a baritone, in which case you'd need one of the others. Well, um, it will, sorry, it will say very clearly on the website what scale lengths you get with each pattern. So you won't, you definitely won't have to buy them all. 
Um, the reason that he's asking is because he's thinking about uh, making, using them with a radial arm or a compound mitosaur. And then Ehab asked Rick, what uh, mitosaur are you thinking of using? Um, and that's what we used to use, isn't it? No. Um, I used to use a mitosaur, like a hand-powered mitosaur. Um, if you're talking about a machine, you know, the, the, uh, the machine overhead radial type saw, which um, you're going to struggle to get a blade for it the right size. If you can, then by all means go ahead and get one. But I hate those radial saws for doing fretboards. We used to have one at the factory for a very short period of time because what we found was it tended to snatch. It wasn't the best for, for health and safety. And also you've got this blade spinning in the air. It's not ideal. So if you're talking about an overhead radial saw that comes over a cross, like a power saw, I wouldn't use that. If it was me, I wouldn't use it. I would, um, if you want to see how we do it, check out the video, how we do it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's called making a fretboard, how we do it. And if you're buying a pre-made fretboard from us, you know, there's no shame in, um, in our kits, electric and acoustic kits, we supply a pre-made fretboard, which has already got the radius on and, um, and slotted for you um, and tapered. So it's pretty much a finished fretboard ready to go. I don't think there's any shame in that, especially for your first build. Um, buy a pre-made fretboard, at least you know it's going to play in tune. And then um, what you can do is you can sell your first guitar and then You'll have, the money to, you you'll have the money to buy a fret slotting jig. This is what advice I give people to Carol. If you can't afford to buy a fret slotting jig, then um, there's no shame in using a pre-made fretboard for your first guitar. And then you can sell it and you'll have the money to buy some more tools, including your own fret slotting jig. Maybe something like this. Um, there's a few things in the chat. Go on then, a few things in the chat. But I'll carry on sawing. But before you do, um, Darren says that there's a hole on the end of that saw that you could put a bolt in. Yes, so there is. 20 mil, 20 mil from the end. Um, the saw is made in Sheffield. Brilliant. Yeah, so as you've seen, I've, um, there's a... I've, I've literally never used this jig before in my life. So this is the first time I've used it. You guys have seen me um, making all my mistakes with it. And, uh, but I guarantee by the time I get to the end, I'll probably be an expert of using it. <laughs> Certainly once you've done a couple, it gets easier and easier. So I think, especially with a tapered fretboard, I think I still prefer to keep the clamp on. But that's just me, I guess. Got any more comments? We've got, we've got loads of questions, but I think we should wait till we finish. Well, no, keep going. I'm just filling in time while you're... Go on. These were right at the beginning, so I might as well ask them and you can tell me if you've answered them. Go on. Um, so right at the beginning, uh, asked, can, can the height be adjusted? Yes, the height can be adjusted using Is the right-hand ones. I thought he said use the left-handed ones. Um, yeah, these go up and down. So you can use them to, to hold the saw without it rattling, and you can also use it to um, set the height it cuts into. Um, we did mention that earlier, so... I think he was talking about different thicknesses. Um, and then, because he also asked later, um, that obviously, he was saying you can't use this with a one-piece, you wouldn't use this with a one-piece neck, could you, a one-piece fretboard? No, I don't think you'd get a one-piece neck in there, because it's not wide enough. Um, right. Maybe a Telecaster. We've covered the depth of cut, have we? Yep, depth of cut is adjustable with these. How many frets have we got? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
Nearly there. Matt Tolman asked, um, is, is it a pull or a push saw? And um, bag puss, bag puss? <laughs> Bag puss. Bag puss said it's a pull saw. <laughs> yes, it cuts on the pull stroke. It's cutting on the pull stroke. Um. Rick to Natal asked a question uh, about different templates for regular versus zero frets, and Bag Press answered that because the Macaferian and other Gypsy guitars have a zero fret and not a nut slot, the two scales allow for this on these patterns. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, Azad! Azad! Uh, any of these scale lengths would work with a zero fret. Uh, listen, Azad had a fantastic question. But Azad asked a fantastic question. And that was which side of the fretboard do you recommend that people use? So, you know, cut the slots on. The best side. I'm going to show you my little trick for that then. Uh, using this fretboard, look. Look, this is the back of the fretboard. Um, this is a. This is the front. Why? Because it's smiling. <laughs> this is true, I'm not winding you up. You know, um, if you ever see an advert for a watch, it's always 10 to 2, because that makes a smile shape on the watch face. You have a look, every advert you'll ever see for a watch, it's always 10, to, 10 past 2, I should say. No, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Well, I, I, I roll that over to guitars, so... Uh, <laughs> So you can have your fretboard um, either way round. So we could have had it like sad face. Smiley face is better though. <laughs> so basically what I do is I use the grain of the word. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit. I use the grain of the word. And you see it's no, it, sometimes it's pretty straight, in which case it doesn't really matter. Just choose the best side, the side you like the best. Um, sometimes the grain's pretty straight, it doesn't really matter. But if you have got a bit with curvy grain like this one, then I always do it so that it looks like a happy face when you're playing it, hmm. rather than um, a sad face, look. <laughs> or I always say, if you want to play blues, do it that way around. If you want to play pop music, put it that way around. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? So, um, should we do one more? I think I'm there. Um, Parsnip Fingers said, so you end up with shallower edges um, after you've radiused. 20. Yes. Yes, you do. Um, with this style of construction, you're ending up with a flat slot through a curved, the radius of the curved board. So, um, yes, the end of the slots does get shallower, which is why I was saying earlier that. Um, I would always, before I put the actual frets in, I would always double check the fret slot depth. And if you're following through my methodology, then, um, then the, you'll hit that segment. Check the depth, fret slot depths before you actually put the frets in. Mark. Yeah. Mental DK says you've just screwed me up for life. And every time I see a watch advert, I'll be compelled to look for the smile. Yeah, I've looked, I've looked in there. Everyone I've ever seen, it's always 10 to, t 10 to 2, yeah. 10 to 2. Um, they sell more. <laughs> look, I'm standing now at 10 to 2. Um, Everybody become premium members now. Right. Mark, Raul Shooting in New Zealand says, I just need one of these for a multi-scale fretboard now. Lol, ha ha ha, bag press says, roll. I've already been thinking about it. Brilliant. Um, I've got another suggestion while you're there, Darren. 
um, on my machine, let me show you. On my machine, I have um, a pin rather than, um, I, I have this kind of pin rather than a round pin on mine. And what I've done is I've made, I've made a slot with an offset pin and it's offset by exactly an eighth of an inch. So what I can do is I can put that in my machine and cut the nut slot and it comes out exactly an eighth of an inch. Do you see what I'm getting at? So what I'm wondering is if you can make um, something that fits into here, something that fits into here, which basically just has another pin in it that's offset by an eighth of an inch, then that would allow us to cut the nut slot. You see what I mean? Anyway, that's just a, a little one to chuck out there. Um, let's see how this comes off now. So I've not, obviously I've not, um, I've not used these patterns before. You have to make sure, as I was saying earlier, it needs to be on there pretty solid so that it's not going to move. And then getting them off, what I normally do is just gently bend the pattern back and the fretboard should come off. You do have to be a bit careful, it's got so many slots in it, you can actually snap them if you're really not careful. So try and just ease it off gently. You can use, um, if it's really on there tight, you can use a, something like a ruler and a palette knife just to gently take it off. And with a bit of luck, the double-sided tape will come straight off. Now, as I said, um, I actually did put a dust coat of sealer on these this morning, on this one anyway, this morning, just like I showed you earlier. So I'm hoping that it's not going to do any damage when I pull the tape off. Um, a good way to get the old tape off is with, a, with an old piece. You can just use the tape to get the tape off. And you want to peel it off carefully so that you don't damage the pan. Even if it's sealed, you could probably still do some damage if you were careless. So be a bit careful. Clean it all off. Ready for the next person to use. There we go. So I think we'll call that a success. Um, So thank you to everybody who's, who's watched that. Um, let's just show you what we, what we did. Look at that. Beautiful slotted fretboard. Um, so I always write on the back what it is, just so that we don't forget. That's a 25.4 inch, that's a Martin scale acoustic fretboard there. Made from Purple Heart. So uh, let us know if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it out to you. Um, perfect. Well, I've got a couple of points there. It's pretty damn good if you ask me. Um, like I say, there were just those two caveats that I would say. I would personally draw a centre line. And because, you know, I make hundreds of guitars, if I want to make it last forever, then I would just shoot a coat of sealer on that, like I did with this one this morning. And, uh, and then it comes off nice and clean. Now, Darren did say that I could crash test one of them for him. But I really don't want to destroy one. Um, I guess we could just do a quick test. A crash test before we finish. Let's use the, um, the baritone one, which is probably the least popular one. Um, I'm going to move this. Go on, shout the questions out, Carol. Um, right, well, we've got comments. Right. So, Andrew, Andrew Kalela has joined us today. Um, he said that him and his son have been making three string guitars. Wow. Right? But his lad won't let him sell them, so he's, they've just made a three string baritone. <laughs> Rock and roll. Right, what we'd like is for you to take pictures, or uh, some video would be even better, and um, share it on the forum. If you head over to Guitar Making 
www.ticketmaster.co.uk. Um, you can join up for free, as a free member. You get access to the forum and you can see what all our members are up to. Um, all sorts of projects on the go. Um, special cloud shout out to Clinton at this point. Clinton's just finished a uh, carved top bandsman. Um, Maybe we'll show it on Saturday. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually, I'm going to show you it on Saturday. So um, if you want a preview, head over to the forum and you can see that now. Um, but I'm going to show you some pictures of that on Saturday. So well done, Clinton. Um, just to prove that um, there are people out there actually using my methods and building guitars way better than I would ever have imagined, to be honest. Yeah, well, so, and also, Bagpress said earlier that um, two of the forum members have, have road tested this jig for real, um, you know, in, in, in yep. their own workshops, and they've done detailed reviews on the forum. Awesome. So you can... Yep, so if you want to see a detailed review on these, head over to the forum and you'll see that. Right, Cheers nice. for that, guys. I've got to say, um, you know, massive thanks to you guys. Um, when I started this thing, really... Obviously, I've got to make a living as well. This is, this is our life, what we do for a living. So um, this is all we've got. Uh, we've got no playing work at the moment because that's all dried up, etc. because of the current situation. This is all we've got. So massive thanks to you guys. Um, really, what it's all about is making it as easy as possible for a complete beginner or even someone who's done it a few times before. Um, it's, the website is full of tr tips and tricks to make it as easy as possible, as pain-free as possible for you to build your first or best yet guitar. Once you've got the methods under your belt, then you can go away and build 10 or 100 guitars. Become a professional guitar maker. Just stay in touch and let us know. So a few more comments and then we'll, we'll yeah, wind it up. So I've got a few comments and then an important question, but not about the jig. So, um, People are asking how, where can I get it? So obviously, go to the website and, and it'll be there. There'll be a product there by the end of the day, won't there? Um, we're taking pre orders, aren't we? Uh, because obviously, we've, we haven't got the stock here. We're talking to Brad Press, he'll be you know, we'll work that out. So, but it shouldn't be too long because he's, he's good to go. It does, it's been us that he's waiting for. Um, the other thing is, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. That's more or less it. Um, but there is, you've had a question, a general question um, from one of your... Oh yeah, just that, um, so we, we it will be available. There's also going to be other patterns available, hopefully by the weekend as well. There's a whole load. And, and we're talking to Bag Press, aren't we, about other jigs and patterns made with his beautiful laminations. Yeah. yeah. So a whole, um, whole host of stuff coming to the website very, very soon. Um, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to use just one great big long piece and I'm going to stick it on this pattern. Let's do a bit of a crash test. Um, I want to find out what happens. So this has been not been treated in any way. I haven't, um, I haven't sealed this one. Did I seal this one? So Black um, Press is saying he's got everything in stock, so we're just, we're just, we're ready to go. Um, Fantastic. And we've had a couple of people asking if, if they can be sent to the US, and uh, Black Press, and we've both confirmed that there, there isn't anything in this that prevents it being shipped abroad, so we can, we can ship to the US, Mark, or anywhere. Why, why has it gone to Black, Carol? What's gone to Black? Black screen. <gasps> it's ended. I haven't touched anything. Why is it, why is it gone? No, it hasn't ended, Carl. Oh. No, it hasn't. We've just changed the camera. Anything. We've just changed the camera. We're back. Um, someone pressed the wrong button. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I've just got this one long piece of double-sided tape. We're going to just crash test this jig here. So this one's not sealed. I just want to see how easily it'll come off um, to see if it'll damage the pattern. Hopefully not, fingers crossed. Let's just stick that on. I'm not going to actually uh, work this fretboard. I'm just going to give it a really good squeeze. In fact, let's overkill it. Will you take a question before you do your final reveal? Yeah, let's do overkill. I'm going to really clamp it hard down onto this bench. Carol, it's gone black again. 
What's going on? I don't know. It, was, it changed itself. I genuinely didn't touch anything. Where is the mouse? Did, is, the, is the fade to black button, some, is, it, is something sitting on the fade to black button? No, just keep an eye on it. Okay. Forget the comments for a minute. I'm going to give it a really good squeeze. Yeah, we've got the gremlins in today. Oh, it's there we go. It's that one there. Don't press anything. Yeah, the gremlins are in today. I know what it is. Did you put your screws on it? It's done it again. No, it's, no, we were there. We were fine. We're there we fine. go. I know what it is. I've, I've put some stuff down on some buttons. Right. Let's give it a really good squeeze, just to see what happens. One last question before you reveal. Go on then. Right, so uh, Louis, you're the new, do you remember the young student that's making? Howdy Louis. Um, I think he's in, uh, in Belgium. Anyway, he, asked, he said that he has found a four inch piece of quarter sawn wenge in his granddad's garage. Wow. <laughs> so, do you think that would make a good neck? Would that be something he should use for a neck? What do you think? Wow, there's some granddad you've got there. Yes, you certainly could make it into a neck. You'd probably want to cut it down a bit first because that's a, a hell of a chunk to work with. Um, maybe take a picture of it and send it, put it on the forum and we'll uh, offer some advice on the best way to cut it. Um, you'll probably need a bandsaw. Uh, I would highly recommend you use a bandsaw to cut it. So yeah, that's exciting, isn't it? Dig, dig what through, see what else you can find. find. See what else you can find. Okay, and one last comment. Rock and Roller 912 says pencils should always be behind your ear. <laughs> yeah, I've got a plan about that. I've got a plan. Right, my belly's rumbling. And uh, you don't, not, don't need to hear that. <laughs> so let's get this done and then we're going to wind it up. So I stuck this down as firm as I could. Let's see what happens when we take it off. Hopefully the, um, the pattern will still be intact. Drum roll. Drum roll please. It is good quality stuff that Darren's used for this. So fingers crossed, it will be all right. But just be careful how you lift it off. What I would say is don't use a long tail. Oh, I Can I change it? No, don't leave it. This is what we call long tail, right? Don't do that. You've got more control if you use a short tail like this and, and just take it off, pull it off diagonally in a controlled fashion. Don't just yank it off and with a bit of luck you'll be able to take it off without damaging the pattern. There you go. Beautiful. So even without the sealer, um, you know, if you're not making hundreds of guitars, it's going to be fine. But if you are making hundreds, then I'd recommend just a light coat of sealer like I showed you. So brilliant. Thank you very much, folks, for watching. Um, yeah, if there was anything that you found interesting or enjoyable or informative in this video, if you found anything useful in, in this video, make sure to click like. Um, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. Most of you haven't. <laughs> I can tell you though. And uh, yeah, of course, we all know the most important thing is that you can buy this. <laughs> you can buy this jig on our website um, from this afternoon onwards. So as soon as we wrap up today, we're going to go and that's what we're doing. Um, most of November is going to be uh, occupied by we're working on putting together the finishing course. So yes, busy, busy, busy. Um, thank you again for watching, if you, especially if you'd stayed right till the end and witnessed the crash test. Um, well done. And remember, the most important thing, apart from that you can support us by becoming a premium member and buying one of these jigs. Oh yeah, premium members get discount on everything, by the way. So. If you want to buy a jig, become a premium member first and then you'll save some money on everything, by the way. That's, that includes all the kits, everything. Premium members get discount on everything. 
Um, so brilliant, yeah. And the most important thing, what is it, Carol? Um... <laughs> it's checked twice, cut once. I found my pencil, it was in my pocket all the time. <laughs>